Hi and welcome. So today we're gonna do day six web exploitation. It's called patch management is hard. So my apologies. I started recording this video earlier and my computer just restarted while I was doing it. So I was almost done and I all put in a lot of answers already and I I'm gonna show you some answers before I'm even done with them. Basically, I tried to reset my progress, but it means that all my progress to the other rooms will also be reset. So, yes, um, this room is about patching is hard. So during a routine security audit before the incident, Masquit discovered some uh, recovery passwords on an old server. She created a ticket to decommission the server to reduce the security vulnerability. The elf assigned to fix this vulnerability kept pushing off the task and this never got done. Luckily, some of those recovery keys can be used to save some systems. Unfortunately, the only way to access the server is through the old web application. So if you can pull out some of the recovery keys to help Maskiti with her pursuit, save Christmas. So this room is all about local file inclusion. I would say that this room is uh, stepping up quite a bit on the scale of hardness, how hard it is. I would say the other five rooms were really, really easy. This one is, I would say, also easy, but it took like a few more steps up in difficulty. So it's highly recommended that you do read all the text and uh, understand what local file inclusion is all about before you even continue doing this room, if you're gonna do it alone because there are some things that might be a bit confusing. So I'm not gonna go through all the text, but basically if you read all the text, you will learn a little bit about PHP, which is going to be the language used for this room and application. Um, <clears throat> basically, just a very short introduction is that we have a URL, and in that URL, we're gonna have the, um, the parameter and the query string, and basically, whatever value it holds, and depending on how the application is programmed, it's gonna be interpreted and in some way included or something like that. Since this is local file inclusion, it is all about the inclusion. And in PHP, it could look like something like this right here, which basically is the uh, vulnerable uh, code. I'm just gonna switch to full screen, sorry for that. So different, different paths you can try and include if you wish to do so. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll down basically. There are some things you're gonna need. I'm gonna tell you already. It's gonna be this line here. Uh, it's called P PHP filter inclusion and convert. And basically it's gonna be important for you to encode and decode, sorry, not encode, but decode base 64. So there's a small, guide here for you how to do that if you don't know already. So basically I'm just gonna scroll down a bit and you are more or less given all the information you need to do. There is actually the command here which is gonna be the final question command and so on but I'm gonna leave it there for now. Basically what I'm gonna do is just take the the, the IP address and yeah, I'm just gonna close these things off and take the IP address. This is gonna be the web page, and you see it looks pretty harmless. So let's go to the first question. Now they ask the first question and I'm sorry the answers cannot be removed. I was recording the video and my computer just restarted and I'm running on a VM so it was like oh my recording got lost and yeah first time just gonna happen like that, right? So it, it asks for the deployed VM to look around, what is the entry point for the web application? Now, when I put the, the, the IP address into the browser URL um, bar, line, whatever you're gonna call it, um, it, all this got appended after the uh, IP address. When they ask about an entry point it is something that they explain in the text you're going to read bef 
uh, attached to this room. I would say that since the actual answer is error, E-R-R, -R, it would be more correct to, to ask for what is the get variable or the HTTP get parameter named on the page you're going to visit for the first time when entering the IP address. But they called it entry point. Um, it might be even be the way to say it. However, in my eyes, this is just another variable which is contained in the URL, get request, HTTP protocol. Anyways, that is the answer, error. The next one, we're gonna use the entry point to perform the local file inclusion to read the ETC flag. Basically, they <laughs> tell me what to do, so I just take it, I replace it with the text, press enter, and what I see down below here is actually the flag, which is just basically copy pasted in as an answer, and then that answers that. Next, we're going to use this PHP filter technique to include the index code, and they got they want me to to fetch the actual value of the dollar flag value. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the um, description here, and they they want you to use this part here. So I'm going to copy this. Basically, just going to tell you in a moment what it does. So we're going to say this variable, we're going to include a PHP filter and whatever we include will be encoded into base64 and what I want to include is the index, index.php file and what I get down below here is a long base64 encoded string which I'm going to copy paste, go into um, my terminal, I'm going to, well, I could, oh, let's do it this way. You're gonna create a nano file. I'm gonna call it LFI, LFI 64.1. I'm gonna paste in the, the the text. And what I'm gonna do is like base 64 dash D for decode, LFI 64 and that. Then I'm uh, decoding my, um, base64 encoded string inside the file basically that's the easiest way and we get the flag variable right here so basically that is the value I copy pasted out and put into the answer as the second flag question let me scroll down to it so you can see it there we go next question would be uh, Max Giddy forgot his credentials so basically they want us to read whatever is inside the index.php file and use the same technique as before. So basically that is going back to the terminal window like this and see, oh, they include something called creds. So basically it's all about copy pasting this, going back, including it like before. We're getting a, a funky string down below. Let me just copy it once again. Uh, not all that, just from the P, thank you. And then you basically just go, we can just create a new file called number two. Oh, sorry, not that, it's gonna be number two. Paste it in, save it, exit, and then do it for number two, and then you get the actual username and password, which is gonna be the answer. Please mind the separating character, which is a colon in between, which is also going to be the format. I think my hint doesn't work in this browser anyways. Then the use credentials to log in. So they um, so use the credentials to log into web application. So basically what I'm going to do now is to take, this is something I cannot remember. Max Giddy, I can type. So let's go to the home, log in, Max Giddy. Alrighty then, log in, don't save. So if we go to password recovery, we're gonna get the flag for the server name, flag, TMA, AOC, which is gonna be the flag answer for the question, which is the next question. Now comes the interesting part. Now they want me to include this part here. And surely I can just copy it and 
go to the web page, which is not gonna be that one. Let me just log out of this. Mm. Go to the oh, da, 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 da. and put in instead of this, they wanted to put that in. And what we get is, of course, base 64 encoded text. So if we go back to the terminal and do something like nano LFI3 and paste that in, save it, and then decode number three. Um, Oh, nano D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, of course. Oh, it is there. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. Number three. It is there. Anyway, let's just do it again. Nano. LFI 64 for base 64, let's just say 4 as the number, paste it in, and then let's do number 4. No, LFI 64, no such file or directory. That's very interesting. LF, uh, LFT, oh, a mistype. That's my bad. So please mind how you hit your letters. Anyways, what you're gonna get is a lot of um, this is a log file for the um, for the web server. So what we could do is doing something called uh, log poisoning. So what we basically would need to do in this particular example is to go back to the um, Description here for the exercise. It is it, it is a walkthrough exercise. So we're gonna tell us how to do it. Basically, want us to execute this curl command so we can copy paste this one here, and then this is just the the IP address for the web page. So let's go back. Um, not that. Let's take another one. So curl is a nifty little tool. If you can copy paste correct, it will work better. Curl is a text-based HTTP request tool, which basically means that you can send HTTP requests um, to web servers and get the response back. And from that, you can you can actually uh, do a lot more interesting stuff. So what I'm going to do now is just to say my user agent, which is cap capitalized A, I'm going to execute this. What I get back is, of course, the um, the main web page uh, of the login uh, with the login in the, somewhere in the bottom. Uh, limited control, blah blah blah. Anyways, we got a lot of HTML back. What I really did was just to do a um, a HTTP GET request with a user agent of a PHP script, and the PHP info is a function that outputs everything from the PHP engine that is enabled, modules that is enabled, um, names, um, sometimes even users and stuff like that. Not users to the system, but if there is anything interesting for us, right? And, and there is many interesting things. Basically, what we could do now is to go back to the web page and let me just, where was the password I do? do. There we go, that's the password for Max Giddy. So now we put some PHP code into the log file and you're thinking, so should I then log in and... Um, ah, uh, sorry for that. Should I then log in and you know, try and see some result? Well, we could try and do that. So let's just do Max Giddy and log in. And then you go to log access, they are friendly enough. And you scroll down, they hmm, doesn't look like there's a lot of things going on here. So basically, we could try and go back to the 
other page and include the app access log, which is, I think, also the one they mention in the guide. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go, yes. So we go back to this page here and we do the exact same thing. Enter and we take the, uh, oh, of course, need to log out. I forget to do that all the time. So let's just do this, and that's the access log. We're gonna enter it, and it looks like there's more content now. So let's copy it all, go back to the nano editor. Let's just call it um, new, new one. I know my naming is horrible. Paste that in, save, and then do base64 underscore new one, and then we could look through all of this and verify whether we get lots of things, right? Anything interesting out of it that could be the answer for the question we're looking for. So what was the original question we were looking for? Let's go back to the browser again. This is the one that I w wasn't uh, able to, to um, well, I haven't had it. My computer broke down, so basically I was about to, to get to the part, so we're gonna need to answer the question, what is the host name of the web server? What is the host name? So what we could do is try to say, instead of encoding this and outputting it like that, let me just open a new tab, we could basically try and just do the normal inclusion as we had before and what we see now is oh you see it right this is the purple um how can i explain this first of all we, we're getting information that we're running a php engine 0.5.2.17 and we get the system message and it's a linux server and Basically, I think this is the answer. We are having the name of local file inclusion, uh, advent of cyber, awesome, blah, blah, blah. So that is the actual name of the system. And what they ask for is also the host name of the web server. So I'm gonna paste that in and submit it. And that is the correct answer. If you wish to continue further exploiting this machine, they actually have some bonus content going on here. I'm gonna leave this to you, but I'm gonna give you some hints. So the current PMP configuration is stored in a session file called TMP, used the LFI to call sessions to get a PHP code executed. Now what you could do is since you can have raw code being executed here, you could try and do a uh, PHP backdoor some, some, some sort, or maybe go with what they told you here. I'm gonna press complete it here. And if you wish to do this step, the bonus step, I highly suggest you do it. But if it, it is too advanced, maybe wait a little bit before you do um, actual code execution. And when you can get code execution, you can create a backdoor, you can create a backdoor, you can get a full control of the server. So this was day number six of Advent of Cyber. I really hope you liked this video. And if you do so, please consider subscribing to my channel. So until next time, bye bye.